Joining me now is Mark Kakanovich, a former Arizona assistant U.S. attorney who has worked on election cases for both parties and worked under both Presidents Obama and Trump. Thanks so much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. So you really think that this is justifiable? Yes, Dan, I do. Um, I think this is a measured approach. As you mentioned, uh, the former president is an unindicted co-conspirator in this case. So he is not a defendant in this case. There's a recognition that there's a uh, saving of judicial resources, as well as the fact that he's indicted federally, as you've already talked about in the program already, and then he's indicted in, in Georgia. So um, this is a very narrow approach to make sure to protect elections in Arizona. And this, if you read the indictment, it's 58 pages long. It's a speaking indictment full of uh, you know, alleged facts that uh, frequently come from published things that were on, on social media. As you said, they, they gathered together at the headquarters of the Arizona Republican Party, and not only did they gather together, they filmed themselves while they were filling out these false documents saying that they were duly uh, elected and appointed electors, which, yeah. as you said, was false. Um, but, but look, you, you've, done, you've done a lot of election cases, right? Election cases are going to be sensitive, right? Particularly when it's Democrat indicting Republican. And when you then do that, three and a half years after the fact, it inevitably is going to lead to questions. Look, I, I think you may be right that technically they may have a case here, but I'm not even focused on that. And I know that that's going to be frustrating to some people, but I'm focused on the timing of it, which I think is necessarily suspect. To specifically address your point on timing, um, putting aside the merits of the case, which I think are very strong, and I think we probably agree on that if push came to shove, but on the timing, uh, Chris Mays, the current attorney general, was elected in 2022. So it was a very close race. And if you read the indictment, it doesn't read like a partisan indictment. The heroes in this indictment, many of them are Republicans, staunch, lifelong Republicans, like Doug Ducey, the governor, who certified the actual slate of electors. But you're and still charging Republicans. I, I got it. The key witnesses are all going to be Republicans. I get that. That's the case in a lot of these cases. But you're still talking about indicting Donald Trump's inner circle six months before the election. That, I, let me ask it to you this way. Don't you think that should factor in to the decision of whether to indict? Do you not think that should be relevant at all? I think it did. I think in um, her statement, she said that it did, that it was, she recognizes that this is close to an election. That's one of the reasons I believe he's an unindicted co-conspirator rather than a defendant, because there's lots of evidence, including his call to Doug Ducey as Doug Ducey is signing it. I encourage people to read it for themselves and to go back and watch that. That call was captured on video as Doug Ducey is but signed, Governor Ducey. But again, I'm going to ask you one more, one more time. Yeah. Don't you think, though, that the timing makes it questionable? Isn't there something about the fact that it's three and a half years after it happened that should matter? I, I think it does matter. I don't think it means that it's questionable. And Mark Kakanovich, good conversation. I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.